All right, why don't we get underway? Well, good evening and welcome to our live Q&A with Skidmore students on studying the humanities. I'm Michael Arnish, a professor of classics and an associate dean of the faculty here at the college. I will moderate tonight's event. As a Skidmore student, you will pursue many disciplines over the course of your four years. We have structured our curriculum to help you explore a wide range of subjects, some in seminar style, others as lecture courses. From a lab science to an arts course in the studio, from a class on quantitative reasoning to one on power and justice, and from a writing course to an introductory course to a major, we help you launch your study so you can focus on a particular subject or two before you graduate. One discipline which all of us here this evening share, indeed, we relish in studying it, is the humanities. By the humanities, of course, we mean to study what it is to be human. We teach you to do so critically. We steer you towards asking profound questions and using reason to arrive at answers. Through the humanities, you explore and contribute to knowledge about the world we inhabit, our own culture, the cultures of others, and how we as humans both create and discover. What makes a painting a work of art? What do we learn from history? How do we interpret the world through a language other than our own? How did our ancestors make decisions? What did they know? What mistakes do we think they made? And how did they contribute to humanity? At Skidmore, in such different areas as our history, classics, my own field, English, history, media and film studies, philosophy, and world languages and literatures, the study of what it means to be human is central. These fundamental issues, the pursuit of truth and the ability to distinguish what is real from what is not are at the heart of humanistic inquiry. We can only improve our lives and the lives of our descendants if we understand the past and the present and how humans have engaged and continue to engage with our world. These are the topics of this evening's Q&A and we are joined by six students who will outline their own Skidmore careers and then take your questions. Our speakers are Jane Cole, a senior from Stone Ridge, New York, an art history major and a political science minor. Emma Eisner, a junior from West Hollywood, California, with a self-determined major in film studies. Hannah Gross, a senior from West Orange, New Jersey, and a classics and theater double major. Kevin Ha, a senior from Santa Barbara, California, with a double major in business and Spanish and a member of our Distinguished Honors Forum. Jack Clappish, a senior from Newton, Massachusetts, a history major and a political science minor, and Nicole Wong, a senior from Toronto, Canada, and an English and French double major. These six remarkable accomplished students will share some insights with us about their journeys, and then we will turn it over to you, the audience. Please submit your questions via the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, and I will convey your questions to our panelists. Let's begin. I will call on these students to introduce themselves and say something about their work in the humanities here at Skidmore College. Jack, why don't you start? Hello, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, as I said, uh, Professor Arner said, my name is Jack. I am a history major and a political science minor. Um, I have been all around the humanities world um, throughout my time here. I'm taking a class with Professor Arnish, one of my favorite classes I've taken. Um, otherwise, um, my journey through humanities has been very diverse. Um, I've taken as many different history classes as I possibly could. One of the advantages of the department, and I'm happy to talk about this later in the Q&A too, is that um, you don't really need to declare a specific concentration. So whether I'm studying the Meiji Restoration or the Rise of the Young Turks or American manhood um, in the 20th century, um, I'm able to take all of those classes at the same time and sort of put them together. So my journey um, in the humanities has been in a lot of different departments, but also a lot of different eras and trying to find interesting connections between them. Great, Jack, thank you. Emma? Hi, I'm Emma. I'm a junior and I'm a self-determined film major. Um, my humanities experience has been really fun um, because I first started out as a theater major um, and wanting to minor in media and film studies, um, but I ended up taking a path of self-determined uh, major in film because I wanted to focus uh, specifically on uh, film production and screenwriting and 
actually holding a camera and being able to create um, my own stories. But working in the theater was also really great for me because I was able to learn how production works and work with other students and learn how other departments work together to create a full production. Um, so I was able to work in costuming as well as props um, and other different departments. So um, that also helped me um, with my film major to be able to incorporate all those elements together. Um, so, so far it's been really great. Thank you, Emma. Jane? Hi everyone, I'm Jane. I'm an art history major and a political science minor. I came to Skidmore uh, not really knowing what I wanted to study. I definitely had an inclination towards the humanities and the arts, um, but I wasn't really sure where I would find myself within that. Um, but ultimately, after taking a few art history classes, I decided that it really was the perfect way for me to combine my interest in art and my love of art with my love of analytical writing, because that's something I really didn't want to give up. Um, the art history department has been a great fit for me. I've loved my professors. I really love the close knit feel of the department. Um, I've also been able to use what I've learned in my classes at the Tang Teaching Museum, Skidmore's on campus contemporary art museum where I've held a few internships. Um, the Tang is really invested in using artwork from its collection for teaching and for uh, providing a space for conversations about the intersection between art and social justice. And so that's been a great opportunity for me to combine uh, my two areas of study. So art history and political science. And I can talk a little bit more about that and about the Tang later if anybody has questions. Thank you, Jane. Nicole. Hi everyone, my name is Nicole, as Professor Honor said, and I major in English and French. I think for me, my journey has been one definitely, as Jane said, characterized by the sense of community. I think that I came in knowing that I wanted to major in English and French, and I've really been able to develop that passion through my time here, whether it's <laughs> right now um, translating Marcel Proust as my thesis, or whether it's doing research over the summer with professors in which I got to really know my professor better while working with an 18th century ship log, for example. And I've also been able to dabble in a lot of the leadership roles across campus. So if there are any questions later on about those, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you, Nicole. Hannah. Hi, everyone. I'm Hannah. I am a classics and theater double major. Uh, I started off at Skidmore knowing that I wanted to be a theater major and uh, as part of my Scribner seminar, which was a, it is something that as freshmen, we are placed into a specific class to get to know how working at Skidmore um, is as far as like writing and you, you get paired with a teacher. My teacher was Professor Arnish and it was a, a classics course and through that I uh, remembered my love for classics as a kid and I took Latin in high school which I was able to continue taking here in college and really focus on in my classics major. I think that one of the most exciting things for me as a humanities major is being able to find the connections between my two majors so there are different feeder aspects of classics but at the same time being able to study two very different things at, um, at the same time is something that I've really enjoyed as well. So for example, doing Latin translation or working on a strictly history-based classics course is very different than taking my directing classes in the theater department. And being a humanities major has made it very easy for me to feel like I can do both of those things at the same time. Um, so if you have any questions about classics, double majoring, theater, any of that, I'm here to answer those questions. Thank you. Kevin. Hi all, my name is Kevin Ha. I'm a double major in Spanish business. I'm also a captain on the men's tennis team. Um, I came into Skidmore wanting to do uh, business and uh, my experience, I felt like I was kind of missing something. And so I looked into doing the Spanish major and I think that was probably one of the best choices like of my life, honestly. Uh, and I've been able to leverage what I've been learning in business and translating it over to Spanish, taking courses like business Spanish and um, other really great courses. But 
right now I'm taking two independent studies. Uh, one of them is for my nonprofit, um, helping Asian Americans get uh, jobs in corporate America. And I've also been able to do an, uh, an additional independent study that focuses on Asian, uh, Asian people in, uh, in Spain and Spanish speaking countries. So to kind of uh, uh, merge the two um, disciplines, business and Spanish to my experience here at Skidmore. So um, it's just been really a great experience. Thank you, Kevin. So Emma, we're gonna to turn to you first. Um, a question came in about self-determined major. So when a student looks at the possible majors, uh, say in her sophomore year, we ask our students to find a major by the end of their sophomore year, We've got about 40. And then there's this other one called self-determined. Um, and it sort of stands out as something different. Can you explain what it is, um, how humanistic inquiry has been part of your major, how you came to land on it, what it's been like to shape it? Yeah, so um, the self-determined major is, it can be different between um, anyone's in different interests. Um, it, it pretty much depends on what you're interested in and if you, want to create your own specific major that Skidmore doesn't already have. Um, so I am a film major, so um, that could be different for anyone. So my specific um, focus is on production and I'm interested in gender studies and how uh, women and other genders are represented in film rather than um, just like maybe analyzing films, um, which I'm also interested in, but um, some people could just be focusing on just specifically production. But um, for a self-determined major, there are many other things. Um, some people could go into healthcare or anything else, um, but the whole process of a self-determined major is specific to the student. Um, and what they have to do is go through a whole process of creating a rationale and a proposal of why they want to do this and why this is important for them. Um, and so you have to submit it to a committee and then they they'll approve it after a few more revisions. Um, sometimes they're not always approved right away. Um, for me, it took maybe five times of revising this. Um, it can be a lot of work, but um, if if it's something that you're really interested in doing, um, then it's, for me, it's definitely like very worth it. Um, and the whole, if you're like more interested in like reading about all the different um, kinds of majors people have done, the website, uh, Skidmore Self-Determined Major website explains all of that and kind of goes more in depth. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if there are more specific questions about the self-determined major. It's kind of hard for me to like. Um. Uh, that's great. That's a great answer. But what's really remarkable about it is that the faculty have designed over the course of years about 40 different majors. And they're in many ways very much like what many schools offer. There are classics majors at many institutions. Classics at Skidmore is its own animal, but there are other classics majors in other schools. But self-determined allows the student who can't find the niche that the faculty have designed to craft her own. And with the support of faculty and the committee, as you mentioned, it allows students to pursue avenues that otherwise might not be available to them. For example, we're not a film school, right? And for many students will end up at a place like NYU for a film school, but you've managed to do film studies at a liberal arts college. I find that just remarkable. Um, let's switch to a topic that a number of you touched upon, um, what it was like before you got here and what you are now. So some of you knew what you wanted to study before you ever showed up, like Nicole, who knew that she was going to do French and English. Uh, I don't know, Nicole, if you knew that you were going to be translating Proust in your senior year, but you already knew what you wanted to do. Others of you arrived thinking you're gonna do one thing and ended up doing something else. I was a pre-med for the first half of my college career and I'm a classics professor. So the, the question from, from above, um, the students who have joined us is, you have to know what your major is gonna be when you arrive. Who wants to start? Hannah. So I actually came into this with both uh, knowing what I wanted to focus on and also not knowing what I wanted to double major in. I knew 
when I came into Skidmore that I wanted to be a theater major. And so getting into the theater department was something that I did from day one. I thought that perhaps I wanted to be a psychology double major or a sociology double major. So I was entertaining the thought of double majoring as soon as I got here, but you don't have to declare your major at Skidmore until the second semester of your sophomore year. So there is almost a year and a half, even a, even a little bit more than just a year and a half of time for you to experiment, time for you to look into different, into different classes and different majors. And you don't have to know what you're going to major in until the, the point when you are uh, asked to declare a major. And from what I'm aware, even though I have not changed my major, you, it's if you do decide to change your major, your, your advisor will work with you on figuring out if that is compatible with how long you want to be at school. So there's plenty of time to explore when you get here and, and figure out what what it is that you want to study. I would recommend taking a lot of classes that sound interesting. And hopefully the more classes sound interesting will lead you in the direction of what you end up wanting to focus on, which in my case ended up being classics. Thank you, Hannah. I see your head going up and down, Nicole. <laughs> Do you wanna to add to that? Yes, I would say that absolutely taking the classes that you just find interesting. I think that in high school, you think like, trigonometry one, trigonometry two. Uh, I'm not dissing trigonometry, by the way. <laughs> it can be very interesting. Um, but all of a sudden in college, there are some courses that jump out at you that strikes you as, I didn't even know this could be a course. And I think that if that strikes you and you think, wow, I can't stop thinking about this course, I really want to take it, then take it. It will probably lead you to a place either discovering more about yourself or discovering what you want to major in, which in a way is kind of both. Um, so yes, definitely just follow those, those interests and curiosities. Great, thanks, Nicole. Uh, Kevin, um, how did you land in business in Spanish? Yep, so business for sure was uh, the first major I looked at and wanted to do because Skidmore is a liberal arts college and it's pretty unusual for liberal arts schools to have such a reputable business program. Um, so I knew like from the start that it could be a key differentiator in terms of when I'm applying to jobs, they see that I come from a liberal arts school and I have like a business degree under my belt. Um, and that's been a kind of a, a factor in, in, res in resumes and, and interviews so far. Um, but for Spanish, I definitely wanted to take on something that um, challenged me a bit um, and also let me to be more of like a, a worldly and, and more globalized scholar. Um, so with business, um, I was learning all of these like terms and, and find all these things. And I was getting a bit um, kind of stressed out and I used Spanish as an avenue for de-stressing and being able to, to go to class, have lively conversations. And it was just a good, good balance and mix of um, kind of having fun almost um, away from business. Um, but I've also been able to leverage a lot of learning business to Spanish and from Spanish to business. So um, definitely two very distinct uh, curriculums, but they've been able to complement each other very handsomely, I think. Kevin, what's the, the, the balance in terms of workload like when, you're, when you have two very disparate areas? Yep. So workload for business is more, I would say it's more presentation and um, like PowerPoints and group oriented like that. Um, for Spanish, it's more test taking, vocab learning. Um, there are some presentations in there, but it's definitely a lot of um, collaboration and, and discussion with classmates. So um, I would say the workload is, they're very different in nature, but like complement each other well. Um, yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Jane, um, you majored in art history and you talked about your passion for art, but you're also a minor in political science. Could you talk about one, what it's like to minor as opposed to major? and why you chose that area, when you did, and what it has, has taught you. Sure, yeah. Um, well, I came to Skidmore, as I said, with an interest in the arts and the humanities, um, but I also was pretty interested in taking political science courses. Um, I was interested in politics in high school and kind of wanted to continue learning about it in college. Um, and I took a few intro classes, decided I liked it, 
but was also really drawn to the art history major um, and wanted to make that my primary focus. And so for me, the political science minor has been kind of a, a good opportunity to further explore that interest on the side, um, but to really spend most of my time in my art history major. And so the minor in political science, at least, is six courses, two at the 100 intro level, two at the 200 level, and then two at the 300 level. Um, and so that's been super manageable. I've taken about one a semester and I think I've exceeded the requirement just because it's pretty easy to do so. Um, and it's really nice because there are no requirements in terms of where your courses have to lie within the department. So you can take whatever courses you like as long as they meet those structured requirements of 100, 200 and 300. But other than that, um, you can focus in whatever realm you're most interested in. Um, so yeah, I think it's been a really good complement to my art history major. Art history and all of the humanities inherently deal with politics in some way. Um, and so having more knowledge about how politics function both in the US and abroad, I think has been really helpful for me. Jane, the, the last couple of years, issues of social justice have been front and center virtually every day of our lives. Yeah. Um, how have you blended your studies in political science with your interest in social justice? Have they informed each other? Definitely, yeah. Um, I think I mentioned when I first spoke that the Tang, the museum at Skidmore has been the perfect way for me to do that. Um, so during my sophomore year, I worked as a gallery monitor at the Tang and the summer after I got an internship as an exhibitions and collections assistant. And during that summer, I assisted with research and planning for an exhibition called Beauty and Bite, um, which was bringing works from the Tang collection out into the gallery um, and exploring uh, historically underrepresented artists. So BIPOC artists um, primarily who haven't been featured in major museum exhibitions before. And so that was a really good introduction for me into how art and how museums can be a tool for activism and social justice. Um, and last year during my junior year, as well as the summer after, I assisted with the exhibition at the Tang called Never Done. Um, and that was a celebration, but more so a critique of women's suffrage and the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage in the US. Um, the work includes 100 artworks from 100 different women artists across the country and internationally, um, and is a really diverse representation of both medium type of artwork and artist identity. Um, and then this past fall for my internship at the Tang, I was able to organize my own exhibition that actually just opened in person at the Tang for the campus and online. Um, and it's called Enlivened Aware, Awake Symbols of Activism. And it's about exploring uh, visual symbols historically associated with social justice and activism in the US primarily. Um, and so the Tang was actually able to connect me with a few activists and artist collectives to collaborate with for the exhibition. And that has been really great and really gratifying for me. And also, as you said, a, a great way to use my art history knowledge um, and my work at the Tang to engage with social justice. Jane, thanks. I've, I've seen the um, exhibit on 100 years of women's right to vote. I have not seen the new one. I will get down there tomorrow. Check it out, for sure. <laughs> I want to switch gears a little bit. I mean, all of you, in a way, have talked about this without really highlighting it. You all have relationships with faculty. Um, we're going to lose Nicole in about 15 minutes. She's going to go have a thesis meeting with John Anzalone, who is um, her advisor for her thesis. Uh, Professor Anzalone is in Colorado as we speak, but that um, in the world of Zoom, that doesn't prevent the two of them from working together. And I'm going to ask you to speak about that in a couple of minutes, Nicole. Um, but Jack, I'm going to turn to you. Um, What's it been like building relationships with faculty, finding mentors, having advisors over the course of the years? Um, how has that worked? 
Yeah, um, it's honestly been an excellent experience. One of the things that drew me to Skidmore as a prospective student was the small class size. I think the student to faculty ratio is still eight or eight or nine to one. About so eight. you can get eight, there you go. So you can get um, an excellent, very personal relationship with your professors early in your college experience. So one of my first and still one of my most fundamental relationships was with my Scribner seminar professor. Um, Professor Graney in the political science department, shout out to her, one of my favorite people on campus, bar none. Um, she was just such a warm and wonderful person. Um, and one thing I really appreciated about her class was beyond the really fascinating um, academic aspect of it, she's a Russianist, she's a political scientist. She was just a great person. Um, and it really sort of humanized the professor because I remember coming to Skidmore and thinking, my professors are people with PhDs. They are, you know, suits and ties and tuxedos and, you know, do all this fancy stuff. But at the end of the day, too, I really learned that professors here at Skidmore are, are here to help you. They're here to teach you um, and they fulfill a lot of roles. So she was a really essential part of um, my early college experience just because she was very much there to support me. I've taken every class I can possibly take with her. Um, I'm taking my last final possible class with her this semester. Um, and then later in my college experience, once I declared my history major, um, I originally was really fascinated and wanted to study European history, but I've since shifted towards contemporary American history. Um, ever since taking a class with Professor Morser in the history department, also one of my other favorite people on this campus. Um, he is my uh, thesis advisor. So we've been working very closely together for um, about a semester and a half now, and even before that. So I would say about a full year, we've been discussing my project. Um, and he has just been just excellent, um, helping me make my paper better, helping me break down something that's felt so daunting, 50 to 60 page um, assignment, really break it down into manageable steps. Um, so he has been um, so much of just again, sort of someone personal to me that I can, um, you know, talk to about things if I have problems um, as a contact academically and also as a contact professionally, um, because you can get to know your professors very well. Um, they can definitely help you with internships. They can help you get opportunities to do research. Um, they can help you with opportunities locally. Um, I know, at least I know for me, uh, there's a lot of history around Saratoga. The Battle of Saratoga was a big deal. Um, as I've been told. But um, yeah, so really, if I could sum it up is that professors here, um, the relationship you build with them is very multifaceted. It's not just sort of, you go to the classroom, you leave, you get the lecture, you go. Um, they fulfill a lot of roles for you as not just a student, but as a person and also someone who's looking to enter the professional world. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Jack, I've been here a long time. I've never seen anyone in a tuxedo. Um, feel free to come back at some point after you graduate and wear one. You know, I will. I will say that was just what I kind of thought college was. And then I got here and I was like, oh, all right. Okay. I can, uh, I can loosen the tie a little. <laughs> okay. um, Nicole, there have been a number of questions about research. And I know you have to leave in about 10 minutes to talk about your research with a faculty member. So can you talk about um, why you landed on this particular topic and what it's like to work with, with Professor Anzalone? Yes, absolutely. So I actually started off as an, with an independence. I didn't know Professor Anzalone. I'd heard many good things about him. And I said, I really wanted to find a topic just for independent study that would bridge both my English and my French majors. So I realized that in the French department, Professor Anzalone specializes in translation. And I asked him, I was like, can I, can I translate Marcel Proust? And Incredibly, this opportunity has branched into not just that one semester of independent study, but because we were so close with independent studies, just as with research experiences, um, which I've also done, I could touch on that bit, you have the chance to really know a professor because you work together, you think together, and you're creating something together as well. So instead of ending the independent study in my junior year, we continued through the summer, every single week we would meet on Zoom. And then through the rest of last semester and then through the winter break as well until now. And it's become my senior thesis for both my majors actually. 
um, as for the research experience, I've also done research in the French department working with 18th century slave shipping logs. And in that opportunity, I had the chance to really get to know another professor of mine whom I know since freshman year. And you're working together, you are creating something that could be published together. And that experience has, um, it's not just a professor and a student at that point, you're, you're also colleagues, you're also working partners, and you can also be friends. In my mind, there are some professors I see as, as family, actually. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. Um, Emma, you're a junior. You've got um, a whole year ahead of you. So what do you plan to do in your senior year in film studies? What do you imagine might be your final project, your capstone project? Have you started to think about it? So actually, I ended up taking the self-determined major prep capstone this semester, um, which is odd as a junior. But the reason I'm doing that is because I'm planning to study abroad at the cinema. Well, so it was Cinema Sarah Lawrence, um, but now they renamed it to uh, Semester Cinema. Um, and that's a program where multiple students from multiple schools go to Nantucket Island and create a full length feature film together with uh, 30 professional uh, crew members. And you get to go to Sundance Film Festival and see all the films. Um, and also you get a IMDb credit um, while making this film. Um, so I'm planning on doing that my spring semester of my senior year. Um, so I won't be at Skidmore um, for my last semester, sadly, but I'm also going to be getting really cool experience making a film. Um, so next semester, I would be doing my um, capstone project, which is my senior project. So right now I'm working to create the proposal for that and developing that. Um, and I'm actually doing a short film based off of two scenes from a full length feature, feature script that I'm writing um, for my advanced screenwriting class right now. Um, it's a Western, um, so it'll be really fun to create. Um, I, since I live in California, I'm hoping to film it in the desert this summer. Um, so it's been a really cool experience as a film major because I'm able to incorporate all of the things that I've learned through uh, theater and film production. Um, so it's just been really cool to be able to, as a junior, start doing this and seeing how I can um, incorporate all the things that I've learned at Skidmore together. Um, yeah. Do you spend more time behind the camera, on the script, in front of the camera? What's your passion? Honestly, I've kind of jumped all over the place. Um, when I first was interested in film, I wanted to be a production manager. And I've actually learned that I'm really good at producing things. Uh, I made a short film on campus last semester that I uh, wrote, produced, directed, and then um, filmed. So I've kind of done a lot of things. So I honestly hope to do writing and directing someday, but it's been fun kind of doing everything. Um, yeah. Well, the project on Nantucket sounds spectacular. Just make sure you come back for graduation. No, I definitely will. <laughs> um, so we have an office on campus called the Office of Off-Campus Study and Exchanges. So it, um, ages ago, it was the Office of Study Abroad, and the intent was students would leave the U.S. and go to some other country. Emma's uh, experience that she'll have a year from now indicates that our students do go abroad, but they also go to other places in the U.S. Um, to do projects like this one. Have any of you actually had a chance to do any time abroad with COVID being such a, a presence in our lives? Raise your hands. Let's get Nicole first because she's leaving, then Kevin, then Jane. Um, I was really lucky to go in my junior fall, so actually before COVID, um, to go to Paris and I spent the semester there. And not only did I manage to pretty much finish the entire French major, so one of the pluses of majoring in a language is that a non-English language is that by going to a place that speaks the language you can actually almost finish your major um, and I got to study at the one of the best universities the uh, Sorbonne in Paris and also get to make some lasting connections with people from Paris so I think it was an incredible experience. <laughs> Planning on going back? Uh, Kevin how about you? 
Yeah, I went, uh, I went my junior spring to Madrid, Spain. And um, this was kind of around when COVID was starting, but I spent pretty much the bulk of the semester in Spain. And I did a program called uh, Tufts Skidmore. And so it's like a joint program with Tufts. And the kind of office and um, they call it the sede or the, the center uh, is the, the center of Madrid. So they encouraged us to speak uh, Spanish with our host, with our host family, um, with the other students that are at the sede and kind of just getting really immersed um, in Madrid. And throughout my experience, I was able to join like a tennis club, meet the locals and um, really just improve my Spanish um, host family all the time. And like Nicole, I was able to pretty much fulfill all my major requirements when I was uh, in Spain. So definitely a very uh, holistic, awesome experience, but it was cut short by COVID, unfortunately. But my time there was, was really. Kevin, um, I'm just guessing that you intend to enter the business world. Am I on the right track? Absolutely. Um, you will have leverage because of your work in Spanish. Um, I don't know how strong your Spanish is, but if you're close to fluent, especially with the semester in, in Spain, it will give you an opportunities um, that should provide avenues to great employment. Um, how do things look in the job market right now? Um, right now, it's actually kind of funny you say that. Um, I'm starting a nonprofit organization called the Asian American Dream, and it focuses on providing uh, internship opportunities for Asian Americans, uh, Asian American undergraduates. So not really uh, kind of Spanish intersections there, but um, I think a lot of what I've learned uh, in the Spanish major and my experience in Spain has really opened my eyes and my perspective, um, made it more broad and, and holistic. And so it, I'll definitely be able to utilize those skills to um, running my nonprofit. Good luck. Jane, how about you? Study abroad. Yeah, so I was able to study abroad in Athens, Greece during my spring semester of my junior year, which was also cut short by COVID, sadly. Um, but it was awesome for the eight or so weeks that I was there. I was able to take both art history and political science courses and learn more about ancient art history, which is something that I was not super familiar with before going. Um, I also just loved being in a city. Saratoga is a small city, but it's not bustling by any means. So it was nice to be in more of a cosmopolitan area. Um, and the program I did was called CYA, College Year in Athens. And it brought together about 150, 200 students from colleges across the US. And so, yeah, I was able to make lasting connections with both students from the program and professors, which was awesome. I've done a lot of work with CYA, Jane. What ancient art class did you take? I took ancient Greek sculpture with Anne. I don't remember her last name, but she was great. <laughs> I, I attended a lecture by her in the, um, in the new, well, it used to be new Acropolis Museum. Awesome. Yeah, it's a, a great I, museum. I really loved it there, yeah. And Stewart. Awesome. And Stuart, yep. <laughs> um, so, um, Hannah, you've chosen to major in two things. Was it ever possible to, to major in one and then minor in the other? Or did you imagine that you could fit both in and do everything else that the college asked you to do? Yeah, I, I think that um, certain majors are easily easy to double major with and certain majors that are not so easy to double major with. Uh, actually something that I did for you recently, Professor Arnish was look at how many credits you need for each major and it varies widely across uh, the board for the different majors at Skidmore. So what I would recommend if you are not sure if you want to double major or if you want to major in one thing and minor in another thing, or if you want to try the, the double major and a minor, which might it is often very difficult, um, you will want to work closely with your advisor. So as a freshman, that your advisor is automatically whoever your uh, Scribner seminar professor is. 
So in my case, it was Professor Arnish. In uh, Jacques' case, it was Professor Graney. And they are your advisor until you either make them your official major advisor, like I did with classics, or you find out who you want your advisor to be in your perspective major, majors. Um, I do not have a minor, so I'm not entirely sure how declaring a minor works, but I imagine it works similarly to declaring a major. You just have to talk with the chair of the department and fill out a form with the signature of your advisor, your new advisor and your old advisor, something like that. I don't know the exact. No, that, it's the same as a major. It's too. the same as a major. Um, so I found it rather, um, you do have to balance your schedule if you are double majoring, but with the two majors that I've found, I found that I have plenty of, I've had plenty of time to both complete both of my majors so that I have to have a very relaxed schedule this last semester of my senior year. Um, I could have graduated early if I wanted to, but I took the extra availability with, with the, the credits that I was able to take for classes that were not in either of my majors, which I found very rewarding to take creative writing classes in the English department or in the film department. So uh, I hope that answers the question about double majoring. It does, Hannah, thank you. Um, we have to lose Nicole. So Nicole, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for joining us. Please give our regards to Professor Anzalone. Oh, actually, I wonder, could I say a quick word about the English form? Because I realized I didn't get to say anything about the English. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say, it seems like, you know, you, it seems like I only made it in French, but the English department is truly an incredible department. There are so many various genres you can major and you can specialize in, be it creative nonfiction, poetry, fiction, or for me, it was literary study and, and some creative work, um, creative nonfiction. Um, there's like middle evil literature and disability narratives, which I'm taking right now. So uh, yes, just, <laughs> just want to say a word on it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nicole. Take care. Um, let's spend a little time on the classroom. So different disciplines, the classroom is very different. Uh, biology, chemistry lab, a uh, course in sculpture or painting, a dance course, a psychology lab, a humanities classroom, they're all very different. Um, you've all focused in part on the humanities. So I'm curious what the experience has been like. Is it competitive? Is it collaborative? Do you work mostly by yourself? Um, what's the balance between in-class work and out-of-class work? You get to know your peers. Questions like that. Jack, can we start with you? Please. Sure. So I would say that, um, and something I like to say also I, as, a, as a tour guide that I like to say to my groups is that the environment, the academic environment in the classroom at Skidmore is very collaborative. It's not competitive, it's very passionate. So students, um, that's also one of the things that drew me here too, was that everybody that I met and everybody that I've met so far in my over three and a half years um, has been just very passionate about the things that they're doing. So when you go into a classroom space, um, Everybody who's speaking, everybody's you know sharing their ideas is just very passionate about what they're doing. So I would say that um, the academic environment in the classroom is definitely, you know, you want to, um, you know, you want to do the reading, you want to participate, but it's not like the person sitting next to you is sort of nipping at your heels to sort of get an advantage. It's just that people are just very passionate um, about the things that they're doing. Um, I really can't speak highly enough of the academic and, and classroom environment here at Skidmore. Um, I know in the humanities, it sort of sounds like, um, you know, it, it would, you, it seems like you might have a, a single image of what a humanities classroom um, might look like, but, um, you know, one day it might be lecture, one day it might be um, a full discussion. I know that uh, Professor uh, Erica, Professor Bastris Ducart teaches a class in the history department called The Quest, where you role play the entire semester. Um, that's a humanities class you can take. So there's a ton of variety in the classroom. Um, so it's not like biology students get to walk around and do labs and sort of do these experiments and humanities majors just get to have to sit there and listen. Um, no, it's a very diverse um, and interesting academic environment. Um, and frankly, one where, you know, so you might have a couple classes where you're not sure what it's gonna look like every day. And that surprise and that, um, you know, sort of not that not knowing is is what definitely helps you um, stay interested too. 
Yeah, that's a great answer. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to ask the question that your families have asked you, but I'm not allowed to ask, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And it's about life after Skidmore. Um, and the question is, how has your work in the humanities uh, shaped your thinking about what you'll do after you leave the college? Um, what leverage has it provided you? Um, what professional opportunities do you imagine lie ahead? We've heard a little bit from uh, from Emma and from Kevin on this, but I'd like to sort of drill down a little bit further. Maybe, um, Jane, if we start with you, for example, has the sure, work yeah. of the Tang suggested to you that the yeah. museum world is enticing? Yeah, the Tang has definitely been super formative to my thinking and my goals about post-graduation. Um, I've been a curatorial intern for the most part, and so I definitely am leaning towards doing more of that post-grad. I've applied for a few internships and jobs in the museum world, hopefully for next summer and the following year, um, in mostly modern and contemporary art museums. And so really excited for that. I think that the art history major and the political science minor have both prepared me really well for being a good analytical writer and a good critical thinker. And that's important no matter what you do, um, I think, post-graduation. I did have kind of a career crisis mode this past fall where I thought, do I really want to work in museums? I don't know if I do. Um, and I started thinking a lot about architecture. I've always been um, interested in working with my hands and being involved in the visual world around me, which in some ways is similar to uh, curatorial work in museums. And so that's kind of a, a parallel path that I'm exploring in addition to museum careers. But I will say that Skidmore's Career Development Office has been super, super helpful for me with that. Um, over break, I was able to connect with multiple alum working as architects through LinkedIn and through um, Skidmore's Career Advisor Network. And I did maybe eight informational little interviews with alum who are working both in the museum world and in architecture. And so in some ways that's a, a silver lining of this pandemic situation we're in right now as I was able to have meetings with alum across the country over Zoom um, and just chat about Skidmore and their, their life and jobs. And that was, that was great and really cool to be able to see what alum are doing. Jane, thank you. Anna, how about you? I mean, I hate asking an advisee of mine this question, but. Um, I think that the, the most interesting part of the classics major for not the most interesting, but a very helpful aspect of the classics major uh, is that we have this class called classical major and beyond where we, we learn about how to apply skills that we learned in the classics major to different fields uh, that maybe have very little to do with the, the history or the Latin or the Greek that we have taken as a major. Uh, so we learn about transference skills. We learn about um, uh, doing, uh, making resumes, and and we we practice uh, interviews, and we learn about elevator speeches. It's a very uh, good one credit class that seniors are required to take as a classics major. What I specifically am going to do after graduation is still very up in the air for me, as the trajectory that I had anticipated pre-COVID is now fuzzier since I have to uh, discover my way in a, in a post pandemic, uh, in the middle of a pandemic world. Uh, I still do plan on going to grad school, um, which, and I plan on using uh, the career office, the career development office that we have to, to make connections with different alums and to, uh, we have something called humanity where, uh, people can reach right out directly to students that they're like, hey, apply to, to be a teacher or apply to, uh, to do an internship. Uh, so there's, there's lots that I could be doing. I just, I don't know that I am doing it as successfully as other people are. We'll get there. We know that Kevin has already started a nonprofit that Emma is gonna win her first Oscar by the age of 28. Um, Jack, how about you? Yes, yeah, so I would say that um, something that's helped me from the humanities, um, you know, in my car career wise, 
is that you learn so many valuable skills that maybe are not specific to your major that you would need for you know a job anywhere. Um, as a history major, I would I am still planning to go to graduate school at some point. Um, I really would like to, but in the meantime, I'm thinking of you know doing at least a couple of years professionally, and I've really realized that the reading and writing and comprehension skills that I've learned as a humanities major has helped me apply to a whole host of other things. So I would say that um, um, I am just sort of like casting a wide net, I guess, and humanities really helps you do that. As much as humanities helps you if you are you know exactly what you want to do and you want to do something specific, that's awesome. But if you're looking to sort of you know expand a little bit, maybe dip your toes into a lot of different places, um, the general skills that you get in humanities, especially reading, writing, presentation skills, um, and also just you know understanding things critically, um, even if it's not in an academic sense, really helps you sort of expand. I mean, I, I really feel like that. For example, as a history major or an English major, there are literally probably hundreds of fields in which your experience will have some connection to. So I really think that humanities prepares you, you know, maybe a lot better than I anticipated when I first got to skip more for the job world. So a question that came in that's related to that is, is there something about studying the humanities, the question described it as a secret that humanities majors know um, that others don't. Is there something about being in the humanities that has opened doors and lightened up, enlightened your thinking somehow? Um, Emma? Um, I guess for me, I enjoy more hands-on learning and being immersed fully into what I'm doing. Um, so I think that I've been able to fully do that by just incorporating everything I've learned through theater and film. Um, and also I'm, I speak German, so I also have been able to do that. Um, I don't know, I think honestly, it just be, it's more personable for me. Um, I enjoy just being fully immersed, like I said. It's probably different for other people. <laughs> Emma, thank you, that's no, a great answer. Um, Jane, you're gonna sit down with your high school senior self and she She's going to say to you that I don't understand why I should study the humanities. What would you say to her? I would say, well, um, there are so many reasons you should, should study the humanities. Um, first of all, I think one thing that's been really important for me is that the classes are definitely challenging. So I've had a lot of reading and a lot of writing to do over the course of the past three and a half years. Um, but they've, they've helped me improve. They've been, um, they haven't been pointless at all. And they've also left room for me to take other courses and have aided me in other courses. So although the individual courses in the humanities are rigorous, from what I know of most disciplines, the requirements in each major are not tremendous. So unlike if you're pre-med or I don't know, something else that requires a more um, linear path. The humanities allows a lot of opportunity for interdisciplinary study. So I've been able to take courses across departments outside of the humanities, um, all of which I feel like I've done well in because of the really strong reading, writing and comprehension skills, as Jack mentioned, that I've learned in my humanities major. And it's just really fun. There's a lot of talking, um, a lot of discussion, a lot of debate and you get to know a lot of really cool people. Thanks, Jane. Kevin, what would you say to your high school self? Um, that'd be a great conversation to have. Um, but yeah, definitely echoing the thoughts of my peers. It really just immerses you um, connecting with peers. And I would say I've been thinking about like work-life balance a lot heading into my career. And I think that the humanities and, and the Spanish major, for instance, it's really made me think more about work-life balance. I would say and attribute my business major to the more work end side and the Spanish major to the more life side. Um, and really just combining the two has given me such a great experience here in college. And I definitely want to um, kind of mold my experience uh, in my career to the one I had in college, um, having a great balance. Kevin, thanks. 
So my last question is still going to play with this idea of your high school self. But it's now not just trying to persuade yourself three, four years ago um, to pursue the humanities while you're in college, but to come to Skidmore as opposed to any other school. Um, why choose Skidmore? Anna, what would you say to yourself four years ago? Why Skidmore? Four years ago, I wasn't even sure that I wanted to do a liberal arts college. Um, but I would say to myself that you choose to go to Skidmore because of the relationships that you can form with not only your peers, but be with your professors and uh, uh, the, the different paths that that will lead you to is more than you can really anticipate going into a liberal arts school. Like, you know, I didn't know I wanted to be a classics major and it, and yet it was a part of my journey at Skidmore that really came because I went to this school. Uh, so I would say choose Skidmore because um, it is a, a community um, that you will really feel welcomed in. A great answer. Emma, three years ago, what would you have said to you, Phil? Exactly what Hannah just said. That's exactly what I was going to say. So she said it greatly. <laughs> okay. Jack? I would tell myself, and not to sound like too cheesy, um, you can you can have it all. Um, you can experience the comfort of a small liberal arts college and that sort of community it brings, but you can also walk down Case Walkway, which you know I know this is virtual, which is just the main walkway on campus, and you'll see people you've never met before all the time. Potentially people that you'll you know meet and become friends with. Um, you can enjoy small classes and a tight knit department, but also do research and things that you never thought you could be able to do. So what I tell myself is that um, you can, Skidmore is a place where you can really mold your experience to what you want it to be. So much of that power is in your hands. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the faculty and administration here who you know care about your four years, um, but also just that the inherent freedom you get to pursue things academically and extracurricularly. I know that's not the topic of tonight's panel, but there's just so much room for you to experiment and mold your college experience to exactly what you want it to look like. I think that's a great way to end. That was wonderful answers from all of you. So I wanna thank Kevin and Hannah, Jane, Emma, Jack, and Nicole, uh, who is talking about Proust in French as we speak. I wanna thank you all for taking the time, uh, for answering the questions. I wanna thank all of you who joined us this evening for your great questions and for listening in. Um, and we hope to see you or know that we will see you next fall on campus um, as the class of 2025 arrives at Skidmore. So I wish you all a good evening, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>